And you have brought us into a new month, the beginning of the Imba month, the first of September. Father, we are grateful unto you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, our Father who is in heaven. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, we are asking you that this morning you speak to us your word. You strengthen us, Lord, from your word. Inspire us, energize us, bless us, prosper us. Let your word bring liberty, bring freedom. Let your word preserve us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are powerfully welcome to the month of September. This is the first of September. Welcome to the Rapture Preparation and Discipleship Ministry. Amen. Amen. Bringing you the word of the Lord this morning as received, as inspired for the month of September. So this morning we are looking into the beauty of life when mercy is magnified. The beauty of life when mercy is magnified. Amen. It's a prophetic message for the month of September and for the Mba month from now to December. It's a prophetic message. The message you should not forget. It's a message you should continue to remember and to intercede. Because it will do you good. Amen. Our text is Genesis chapter 19 from verse 18 to verse 21. Somebody can come and read for me. I'll prefer from the King James Version. Genesis chapter 19 from 18 to 21. That is our text. We are looking at the beauty of life when mercy is magnified. How beautiful does life become? Does life really, does it make a difference? Amen. Does it make a difference when mercy is, 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 is magnified to us? Is there any difference in our life? Does it make a difference? So we're going to be looking at it from the scriptures today. Amen. The beauty. Does life become more colorable, more beautiful, more glorious when mercy is extended, is magnified to us? That's what we're going to look at this morning. And you understand from the word of God this morning that lives become more beautiful. The more mercy is extended to you, the more beautiful life becomes for you. No matter what life holds for you now, it can be better. Amen. It can be more glorious. It can be more beautiful. All you need is more mercy. The more the mercy you receive, the more beautiful life becomes from you. Becomes for you. Amen. Amen. Lives can be beautiful. Life can be beautiful. Solomon lived a beautiful life in the scripture. He saw life Solomon beautiful. It was mercy. David live a beautiful life in the scripture. It was mercy. Job live a bit. So you can live a beautiful life on earth. And a beautiful life is a life of security. A life of favor. Amen. Amen. It's a life of what? A life of protection. A life of abundance. A life of prosperity. A life of health. 
Amen. A life void of plagues, void of, of struggle, void of affliction. You can live a beautiful life in this world. So, what defines the beauty of your life, the level of beauty you enjoy in life, is what? Is the level of mercy that is what? That is amplified to you. Please listen to me this morning very well. Life can be better. Life can, you can live a secure life. When one happens, other will not happen. He said, when men shall be saying there is what? There is a casting down, you shall be saying there is what? There is a lifting up. Beautiful life. He said, a thousand will fall by your side. And how many by your right hand? Ten thousand but it shall not come near you. Do you know why? Because you are living a beautiful life. There is a life that is beauty. There is a life that is colorated with, a be- with, a- with beauty. You can live that life. It's a choice. You can choose to live that life. I'm going to show you about seven to ten things that makes that 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 that, that, that you know that that, that, that that makes life beautiful. And I want to show you four to five things that you can do to be to step into this realm. It's a realm. There is a level you come from that you begin to enjoy mercy magnified. There is what to do to make mercy to what? To be magnified in your life. Amen. What do I do? How do I come to that level? Where I can begin to enjoy a, a beautiful life. A life of glory. A life of honor. A life of favor. A life of prosperity. A life of security. Hey! A life of abundance. How can I get a life of, of healthiness? I become healthy in life. How can I get to that level? What are we talking about this morning? Genesis chapter 19, read for me from verse 18 to 21. King James. King James, yeah. Yes. And Lord said unto them, mm-hmm. Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy. Which thou Your hast servant has what? He has grace found grace. In thy sight. Some version use favor, NIV use favor in your sight. Your servant, grace is favor, favor extended. Your servant has found favor in whose sight? In your sight. Why did he find favor in the sight of, G- of, of the angel? He found favor. What did he do to find favor? What happened to him that he found favor? <laughs> Read and on. thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shown unto me, saving my life. So it was mercy magnified unto what? Unto who? Unto Lot. Thou hast what? Really? And thou hast magnified thy mercy. What was magnified to him? Mercy. Mercy was not just shown him, but it was what? It was magnified. And my prayer and prophetic word for us is that from this September 2024, mercy will not just be shown us, but it shall be magnified to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mercy be magnified to our families in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some people, they only show them mercy. Amen. What happened to them? Mercy. Only mercy shown them, but it's not magnified to them. Mm. Not God has been showing us mercy, Abby. Yes. But we are saying, Lord, beginning from this moment forward, we want it to what? To be what? Magnified. To be magnified. Because the more mercy you receive, the more favor you receive. The what? The more mercy you receive, the more what? Favor you assess. The more favor you enjoy. The more mercy received, the more favor what? Enjoyed. Amen. Amen. God has been showing us mercy, but now we say, Lord, mm, we want it to what now? To be what? To be magnified. Praise the Lord. See, I've seen favor. Amen. Because mercy was shown me and it was not just shown me, it was what? It was magnified. Read on. 
and I cannot escape to the mountain, mm -hmm. lest some evil take me and I die. Mm -hmm. Behold, now this city is near to, to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape, Tita. Is it not a little one, and my soul shall live? And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city. For the, for the which thou hast spoken, has haste thee, escape Tita, for I cannot do anything till thou become Tita. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth, when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of yeah, heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. We are past it, man. Praise yeah. the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Lot was a man that what? That escaped, cal escaped what? Calamity. He escaped what? Evil that came upon a land. The evil was what? Was upon the whole land. And what happened to Lot? Lot escaped that evil. What the Lord did? He escaped. Amen. Amen. Evil came upon a land. One man escaped. In the midst of escaping, he made a request. I want to go to this city, Angel. And what happened? His request was what? Granted him. He was protected. He was favored. Abby? He had he enjoyed what? He enjoyed what? Angelic interventions. Because the Bible said the angel of the Lord encamped around them that what? That feared the Lord. Do you know that one secret to a life of victory and and what? And preservation and protection is what? Is the ministry of angels. Amen. Amen. When you begin to enjoy angelic ministry, you know what happened to you? You begin to enjoy total freedom and liberty. You don't touch a man whose angels are guiding. Nobody touch a man. Nobody touch a family that angels are on guard. You know what the Bible, what the Bible tells us in Genesis after Adam and Eve sinned and God banished them from the Garden of Eden, you know what God did to Eden? God placed one angel. How many angels? One. one angel to guard the border of, the, of Eden so that nobody can have access to it again. Mom said, that angel had a, a sword called a flaming sword to keep the ways of men from access to Garden. And that was why see, tomorrow nobody have entered Eden on earth again. It was taken away. It was hidden because an angel shielded it. We can be shielded. We can be protected. Amen. Amen. What? How beautiful is life when there is no danger? Mm. Eh? When a thousand fall by your side, ten thousand fall by your right side. When you are safe, he said, "In going, you shall be safe. In coming, you shall be safe." What? How beautiful is that life of safety? It become beautiful. When there is no danger to your life. Amen. Amen. One of the beauty, I'll tell you about seven, eight, ten of the beauty of a life. A life that makes it magnify. One of the beauty of a life that mercy is magnified to is that that life enjoys angelic ministry. The first beauty of a life to which mercy is magnified is that that life enjoys what? Angelic ministry. When mercy is magnified to you, angels will encamp around you. Number two beauty of a life, number two beauty of a life that mercy is magnified to is that there is open heaven. What happened to your life? The heavens are what? Are open over your life. Open heaven. You begin to enjoy what? You begin to enjoy open heaven. That is, you begin to live the life 
of heaven on earth. You want to leave heaven on earth? As the so-called say it. You know what happens to you? What do you need? You need mercy, not just to be shown you, but to be magnified to you. The more mercy you assess, the more mercy you receive, the more angelic ministry you enjoy, the more mercy you receive, the more the heavens are open unto you. Amen. Amen. I've said two things. Number one is what? Angelic ministry. You enjoy angelic ministry. And lives become protected when angelic ministry is in force, is in place. Demons don't mess around a man who enjoys angelic ministry. No way. Familiar spirits, occultic demons, territorial powers, ancestral altars, ancestral foundation don't fight a man. You can live a life without the altars, with, without the things happening in your father's house happening to you. You can live that life. I've decided in my life that what happened to my father will not happen to me. My father lived the city, never built a house. That will not happen to me. If my father lived, lived my father could not, could not take care of his children's welfare. It will not happen to me. No way. My father drink, drank alcohol through his life. I will never taste alcohol. Amen. Never. He was an irresponsible man. I will never be irresponsible. Amen. Never. I have vowed that my family as extra, my altar, the altar of my father's house will not fight against me. How am I going to be victorious in this battle? I need angels. If I go and bury charm, bury charm on my way, I will, I will, I will pass. Nothing, no evil will happen to me. Number three things you enjoy is that you enjoy supernatural protection. Number three things you enjoy is what? Supernatural protection. You enjoy supernatural protection. You are supernaturally protected and preserved. Protection and preservation is what you enjoy. Number three, things you enjoy. When mercy is magnified to you. Amen. The more mercy you assess, the more protection you command. The more protection you enjoy. You know what the Bible says? In, in Mark chapter 16, he says, even though you drink poisonous drink and it shall not work, and it shall not affect you. They put charm. We were talking about one of our, our, our town, our, our, our town lady yesterday. You said that she came back from market and she vomited and vomited and died. Remember yesterday? Yes. But the Bible said, for me, I will carry that same thing she drank and drank and I will come out or this. I will not even vomit blood. Yeah. I will do. <laughs> you don't mean it. That is what you enjoy. When you are what? When you are, when mercy is magnified to you, nothing, no evil. Say, there is no what? There is no enchantment against what? Against Jacob, no what? No divination against, against him. No enchantment against you. What does that mean? You begin to enjoy what? Supernatural what? Protection and preservation. Amen. No weapon that is formed against you shall what? Shall prosper. What is that? That means you are enjoying what is called what? Supernatural protection and preservation. The Lord become your shield. For thou, O Lord, are the shield for me. You are my glory. And the lifts are of my head for the whole on for the whole on are the sheep for me for me you are my glory and the lifts are of my head you can enjoy protection. Amen. You can all, you can enjoy protection. Number four, you can enjoy the life of prosperity. Amen. You enjoy the life of prosperity and abundance. Prosperity. You enjoy prosperity. You can be in health. Third John says what? And we shall both in that word. That that would be what? 
you you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. The level of mercy you enjoy de determines the level of what? The level of prosperity you enjoy. The level of mercy you assess depends on what? Determines the what? The prosperity you enjoy. You can prosper in the midst of what? In the midst of scarcity. Amen. You can what? Prosperity in the midst of scarcity is what? And is what? Is part of what people enjoy when mercy is extended to them. Prosperity in the midst of lack. There is, there is, there is famine in the land. Abby? There is hunger in the land. But yet you are enjoying what? Prosperity and abundance. Nigeria, things are difficult in our nation today, Abby. But we can be enjoying prosperity and abundance if more mercy can what? Can be released to us. If mercy can magnify to us. Amen. You are in a land of scarcity. You are in a land of what? Of what? Of scarcity. You are in a time of economic crunch. Economic difficulty like it is in the nation today. Food is scarce today in Nigeria. Amen. But there are people who are not affected in any way. Do you know why? Because of the level of mercy they are what? They have been able to what? To enjoy. Prosperity in the midst of scarcity is one of what? One of the beauty of a life. A life what? A life that mercy is magnified to. So we can, there can be a change in the month of September and upward such that our cases will be different. In the midst of the scarcity of food, of the hike of the price of food, in the midst of the economic woes and challenges in this nation, we can what? We can be enjoying what? Prosperity. We can be enjoying what? Prosperity. If, if mercy can what? Can be magnified to us. So, one of our prayer, our core prayer this season is what? Lord, magnify what? Your mercy to me and my family. So that we can begin to what? Enjoy abundance and what? And prosperity. You can enjoy what? Abundance and what? And prosperity. Number five thing. Amen. That is the beauty of a life. Amen. That message is magnified to. Is that you enjoy security in a land of insecurity. <laughs> you understand? Security in the midst of insecurity. Amen. What do I say? Number five is what? Security what? In the midst of insecurity. They are kidnapping people. But you, you go past and they go see you kidnap. People are need to attack people, Abby. You, they don't attack you. Number five, I see, is what? Security in the midst of insecurity is one of the things that people enjoy. When they are what? When mercy is magnified. How come one man was secured in the land of in the in the land that was doomed for destruction? How come Lot was secured? How come he was separated? Mercy magnified. Amen. Mercy what? Magnified. Praise the Lord. He was secured. His property was secured. The land was destroyed. Abby, the angels say we cannot do anything to this land until what? Until thou escape. One man. The angel could not strike the land until what? Until that man escaped. Remember the case of, of Israelite in Goshen? Remember the case of Israelite in Goshen? There was what? There was a plague in Egypt. But the people of Israel, they were what? They were secured in, the, in Egypt. God was plaguing the land. But what happened to the people of Israelites? They were what? Secured. They were secured in Egypt. Even at night. Remember the night, the night, chapter 12 of Genesis. I mean of, of, of Exodus. So Exodus chapter 12. The night that that angel went out to go and destroy. Remember that night, man? Well, it's chapter 12 now. Let's go to chapter 12 from verse 12. Genesis chapter, I mean, Ezra chapter 12 from verse 12. The night, the angel went, the angel of death went to the land to on go that, and strike the land. Uh -huh. On that same night, uh -huh. I will pass through 
we give that strike down every first boy. Mm -hmm. Both men and animals. Mm -hmm. And I will bring judgment on all the girls of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Continue. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. Mm -hmm. And when I see the blood, mm -hmm. I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch no you. No destructive plague will what? Which verse is that? You. Verse 13. The blood, it says what? What does the blood represent? It will be a sign for you. What does the blood represent? The mark of Christ. No. The blood represents mercy. It represents what? Mercy. See? The speaking of blood that speaketh what? It speaketh mercy. What does the blood speak? The speaking of blood that speaketh mercy than the blood of Abel. What does blood speak? Blood, blood speak what? It speak mercy. It's in Hebrews now. Hebrews chapter 12. The speaking of blood. That speak better things. Blood speak what? It speak mercy. What kept them? There was a plague over the night. There was a destruction in Egypt. An angel of destruction walked through. But he said, upon the little of your house, let the blood of the lamb be used to what? To mark the little of your house. And then what shall happen? You will become protected. <laughs> Read on. No destructive plague will touch you. Are you hearing that, about? When I strike Egypt. Uh -huh. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. No destructive plague. Protection. Mercy. The more mercy you enjoy, the more to work, the more protected you are. Demons can be toasting lives up and down, but not the life of a man that mercy is magnified to. You see, but an angel, an evil angel was given a command to go and strike the land. I don't know whether an angel, let's take it an angel, by the way. Let's not say an angel was what? Was given a charge. Sorry, an angel was given a charge to go and strike the land. It's an angel. Amen. Because the angel of God can carry out anything. Amen. Amen. God gave an angel. He's actually a good angel. Yes. Amen. Was given a command to go and what? To pass through Egypt and what? And do judgment that night. Amen. Amen. But yet some people were what? Were protected. They were what? Protected. Because mercy was what? Was magnified to them. By covenant of Abraham. By which covenant? Okay. By the Abrahamic covenant. They were enjoying the Abrahamic covenant. The same mercy that what? That Lot enjoyed. Extended to them. And you can also enjoy this Abrahamic covenant blessing. Covenant mercy. That makes life to become beautiful. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have talked about number 16. That number 6 beauty of a life. Number 16, you, you, you start enjoying the beauty you enjoy. When mercy manifest to you is that your prayers get quick attention from heaven. Your prayer gets what? Bam. There is what? There is quick attention to your to your prayers. When you pray, you get what? You get answered sharp, sharp. Amen. Amen. You begin to enjoy Jehovah what? Sharp, sharp. No more barrier to your prayer. Your prayer will not bounce back. You know, some people pray, prayer bounce back. I, 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 you, have, you have heard that? Prayer bounce back. See, your heavens will become closed. See, when you pray, I will not answer you. Amen. But it is not so. The more mercy you assess, the more what? The more easy you attract. Amen. Answers to your prayer. Isaiah 65 verse 24. Amen. Your prayer become effectual. Your prayer become what? Speedy. Luke chapter 18 from verse 1 to verse 8. Say the Lord will answer the elect speedily. Speedily. Luke 18, you can read verse 7 or so. Luke 18, verse 7. And then Isaiah 65, 
verse 24. Lord shall answer the elect speedily. That verse 6, Luke 18, 6, or verse 6, or verse 7. Say the Lord shall answer the elect speedily. Speedy answers is what you enjoy if mercy is magnified to you. Uh-huh. From verse 6. Which one are you reading? Luke 18. Okay, read from verse 6. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust. Mm, go, to, go to the next verse. And will, and will God bring about justice for his chosen one? Mm-hmm. And will God not bring about justice for his chosen ones mm-hmm. who cry out to him day and night? Mm-hmm. Will he keep putting them off? Mm-hmm. I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when. He will he... answer them how? Quickly. God answers his elect. How does he answer them? Quickly. Which version is that? Then... Let me see King James. The Lord will answer his letter. That is verse 7 speedily. Luke 18, verse 7. Mm-hmm. Verse 7 says, And shall God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? Is that what you are reading? That's Luke 18, 7. Oh, you are reading on our way. God shall avenge them speedily. I, don't I know. tell you There's that. something omitted from them. Your version. Okay. Read verse 7 again. I read another version. Six. And shall not God mm. avenge his own mm. elect, which cry day and night unto him? Let me see another version. Though shall he be not. alone with them. Oh, yeah, read another one. Mm-hmm. Another version. First. I tell you, mm-hmm. you will grant justice to them quickly. Quickly! <laughs> How does God answer his own people? Quickly. Isaiah 65 verse 24. I put that two scriptures in the next one. <laughs> Isaiah 65 24. First right there. Mm-hmm. Before when, they call, mm-hmm. I will answer. When you call, when I call. When you answer. Oh, yeah, now, answer, let me hear you. When I was down, you lifted me. My stone of help, only you are my help. He been easy. Let's see first Samuel chapter 7. Hold on to this one. Let me show you something there. What this thing means. But we say, why Samuel was yet praying? Hey! Are you there? First Samuel chapter 7. When you read that thing from verse 4, 5 down or 6, 7. So why Samuel was yet still offering and praying? The Lord began to respond. First Samuel. When the Philistine gathered against the people of Israel. Verse, Just as, verse 9. Verse 9, okay. Just as Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering. Just as 10, Samuel was what? Sacrificing was sacrificing the, the burnt offering. Just as he was just doing it. All. <laughs> what happened? The Philistines arrived to attack Israel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the Lord spoke with a mighty voice mm-hmm. of thunder from heaven mm-hmm, that day. Mm-hmm. And the Philistines were thrown into such confusion that the Israelites defeated them. Mm-hmm. The men of Israel chased them from Mizpah to a place below Bethka, mm-hmm. slaughtering them all along the way. Mm-hmm. Samuel then took a large stone and placed it between the towns of Mizpah and Jeshna. Mm-hmm. He named it Ebenezer, which means the stone of help. For he said, up to this point, the Lord has helped us. Just as Samuel was what? Was just praying and helping And then, let's see, after Isaiah 65, 24, says about it. Before they call, I will answer. Mm-hmm. Why they are still speaking, I will hear. Hmm. Are you here now? Before you call, because the Bible says to is able to do exceedingly what? Abundant. Abundantly. More that we can ever ask or what? Or think. Before, just as you are praying, you want to come to that level? Eh? Where you, before you pray, God answer, piam. You know the waste time? Sharp, sharp. <laughs> Amen. I don't know whether you desire that level from this month, this September 2024. Is that your desire? 
Lord just prayed. Let me escape to the mountain. The angel told him, even this who you have asked, it is what? It's already granted to you. Oh yeah, also, it's also, Jara, we add unto you. We also grant it to you. You want your prayer to come to the throne of heaven as the arms, prayer and arms of Cornelius? You want your prayer to be effective? Then what do you need? You need what? What do you need? You need mercy to what? To be magnified to you. Let me stop on this and rush quickly because what is important now is that the, the things you enjoy, the beauty of life when mercy is magnified is unquantumable. What do I say it is? It is unquantumable. It is immeasurable. You can't measure it. Amen. You cannot what? Measure it. You cannot measure it. So what is important now is that what do I do? Amen. How do I come to this level? Amen. When I'll be enjoying, when mercy word will be magnified to me. Amen. How do I come to that level? Level of abundance, level of favor. We talked about favor now. I've mentioned favor now. One of the is the life of favor. Now that I've mentioned that you can add it. Amen. I've, I've, it's part of it. Amen. So how do I come to this level? Amen. How do I how do I come? Is a level. How do I assess this realm? Amen. Let's see number one thing to do. What it takes for mercy to be magnified. Are you there? Number one thing it takes. Number one. It takes a covenant relationship. Let's, let's listen. Number one is what? Covenant relationship. Are we in church? Yes. Amen. Number one is what? Covenant relationship. Let me hear you say so. Covenant relationship. Now let's see Genesis. The same Genesis 19, 29. Let's see what happened. There is what? There must be what? A covenant relationship before mercy can be magnified to a life. It precedes, the relationship precedes mercy magnified. Are you there? Genesis 19, 29. I want that to give to read for me. Okay. The one that will read for me. And it's come to pass mm -hmm. when God destroyed the cities of the flame. Mm -hmm. And God remembered Abraham mm -hmm. and sent Lot out of the immediate of the world. Hold on. You say God remembered who? Who did God remember? Abraham. Why was he Abraham? But who was the man that was delivered? Lot. Lot. But who did God remember? Abraham. Lot was the one that was that was delivered. But who did God remember before he was delivered? Abraham. Now the question is that what? Who is that one person that God remembers whenever destruction will happen to him? That he will because of that person save your life. Who is that person? It's no, it can't be Abraham. <laughs> Abraham is is dead. Abraham is God. You are not in Abraham regeneration. You are in a new dispensation. That time it was Abraham dispensation. Now we are what? We are in a dispensation. We are what? In a dispensation, God will not remember Abraham again. There is another man God will remember. You know that man? No? Amen. Who is the lamb for sacrifice? Jesus Christ. Who was the one that wanted to sacrifice his son? He wanted to sacrifice his son in the Bible. That God. It was Abraham. Abi? Yeah. And the Lord provided what? A lamb for sacrifice. God had a covenant with what? With Abraham. That was called the Abrahamic covenant. Now we are operating on what? On what is called the word? The new covenant. And who is the mediator of that covenant? The mediator is who? Is Jesus Christ. You can read Hebrews chapter 5, 
chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, talks about what? The new covenant. God had a covenant with Abraham. And by that covenant, relationship of Lot, what happened? Lot was preserved. Was, what was preserved? Lot, mercy was magnified to Lot because of a covenant with Abraham. That dispensation is passed. We are in a dispensation of grace. Yes. In this dispensation, God had a new covenant that was not upon the blood of lamb, upon the blood of bull, but a what? Upon the blood of a man. And who is that man? Jesus. It's called Jesus. So if mercy is going to be magnified to me and you in this dispensation, Pensation of grace, then we must enter into what? A covenant relationship with who? With Jesus Christ. We must enter into what with Him? A covenant relationship. We must have what? An intimate relationship with who? With Jesus Christ. We must have what? An intimacy with Jesus. Lord had what? He was living practically in Abraham's family. He was an Ab he, he, Abraham. He was living with Abraham. He was serving Abraham. He was the servant of Abraham. You hope you know that. He served Abraham. He was his, his uncle. He served him. He lived with him. He worked for him. He was intimate with him. He related with him. Amen. Amen. With a man that had what? That had a covenant with Jehovah. Now, if you in this dispensation of grace must enjoy mercy magnified, what must you enter? You must enter into what? A covenant with who? With Jesus Christ. You must make him the word, the, your Lord and your word and your God. Only you are with some. Only you are with some. I have you no know other God, only you are with Son. Only you are with Son. I have you no know other God, only you are with Son. Only you are with Son. I have you no know other God. Let's sing it. Let's start about that word. Brethren, Lot enjoyed a life of mercy magnified. He enjoyed the ministries of angels. He enjoyed a life of protection, secret the means of insecurity. He enjoyed prosperity in the land of in the land of scarcity. Lot enjoyed open heaven. Amen. Lot was a man that had quick response to his prayers. What was the secret? Number one secret is a word. He had what? He had a covenant word. Relationship. And the Bible said, remember? It's so powerful. Genesis 19, 29. He said, and God remembered who? Remembered Abraham. And the question this morning is this. Are we related to Jesus? That is the first question. Number two question is that. How we intimate. How what? How intimate. How close. How strong. Abby? How firm is that word? Is that 
relationship. Amen. The firmness. The what? Firmness. The strongness of that relationship. The intimacy of that relationship is what determines mercy that will what? That will, that will receive, that will enjoy. I want us to close our eyes morning and pray to the Lord. Lord, please help me. Lord, I want to be intimate with Jesus this morning. Can you just pray? Can you just pray for yourself? Because that is the that is the back, that is the foundation of this mercy magnified. You cannot be far from Jesus. You can't be a casual person to Jesus and enjoy mercy magnified. Mm. You must be intimate with him. There must be intimacy. Mercy cannot be magnified to you. Except you are relating intimately with him. You are close to him. Can you go to your can you pray this morning? What is it that you are intimate with? What is it? Your makeup, you are intimate with your makeup. You cannot have to apply makeup very well. You are intimate with your with, with, with your business. You know how, 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 how intimate you are with your business. You are intimate with your with, with, with your dressings. You are intimate with your girlfriends and boyfriends. You go out, you are intimate with boyfriend, girlfriend. You are intimate with, with, with strange women and strange and strange men. What are you intimate with? You are intimate with alcohol. That is what you are intimate with alcohol. That is what gives you boost. In the morning, the first thing you do, you wake up, you, you wake up. Alcohol is your tooth, toothbrush. You are intimate with alcohol. No, 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 no. You can't enjoy mercy magnified. You must be into an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, not alcohol. Not money. Some people are intimate with money. They can do anything to get money. They can do anything. They can even go and bow. They can even go and kill ritual to get money. What are you intimate with? Your intimacy is the time of your intimacy. What you are intimately related to is what determines the mercy you enjoy. What is it? What are you intimate with? Your intimacy, amen, is, a, is, a, is, 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 is very vital. What are you relating to? How is your relationship with Jesus Christ? How deep is it? How firm is it? How solid is that relationship? Elagado shakatabalai. Can you pray to him? Maybe you are hearing me. You have not given your life to Jesus. It starts with, the relationship starts with what? With you confessing your sins, repenting of your sins, and accepting Jesus to your heart. That is where it starts from. That is the beginning of relationship. Your, 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 your receiving Jesus is the beginning of a relationship. What do you do after you receive him? That is the relationship. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. You can sit down, please. The relationship with Jesus starts with a man or a woman. Before you can enter into a covenant with Jesus Christ, you must first and foremost repent of your sins. Renounce your sin. Reject sins. Amen. Amen. Reject the devil. Accept Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Then that is the, that, that is what that is the entry. Then when you do that, then you will now start the word. That is the beginning. That is the foundation. Then you now begin to relate with Him as your word, as your Lord and your Savior. You begin to worship. You begin to serve Him. That is as only you are with, you begin to serve him. Amen. It begins with what? With getting born again. With giving your life to Jesus. That is where it starts from. Amen. You are born, you are born again, born of the water, born of the Holy Spirit. You are baptized of water. Amen. Then you are baptized of the Holy Ghost. Then you begin to relate with him. It's not about hey, I give my life to Christ. Mm. It's, it's more than that. 
is a relation, is a covenant relationship. It starts with what? With salvation by grace. It starts with being born again, with repentance, forsaking of sins. Amen. Amen. Accepting Jesus as your Lord and your God, as we saw last week. Praise the Lord. That is the beginning. Then you start relating with Him. Amen. As your Lord and as your God. Number two things to do. Amen. Because I want to round up. I want to is the one the time teaching. Number two things that you should do. Amen. Is that you must live a prayerful life. Amen. Number two is actually intersection. You must become prayerful. You must become prayerful. You must become what? Prayerful. Amen. If you are going to enjoy mercy, magnify, you must be a man or a woman of what? A woman or a man of prayer. You must be a person of prayer. You must be fervent in prayer. You must be fervent in the spirit. You must be a man that pray at all times. First, first said to Nika, chapter 5. I think from verse 17, talks pray at all times. Can we see that please? First to Nika, chapter 5. Then Luke 18 already say, For men ought always to pray. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 and 2. He said, For men ought always. It must be a person that pray always. And we see that in Luke, Luke chapter 18, verse 1 and 2. is there. And then uh, first to Nika, chapter, chapter 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 17 down to verse 18. You see there, pray at all times. And then Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. Check there, you see there. Say for men ought always to pray. Where do you want to read? Okay, Luke 18. Mm -hmm. One day Jesus. No, no, no. Go to where? Say men. Uh, okay, read it. Read it. Uh -huh. okay. Read from verse one, one. Okay, one day Jesus told the disciples a story. To he told the disciples a story. Uh -huh. To show that they should always pray and never give up. They should always do what? He... Pray and never give up. Luke 18. If you want to enjoy mercy magnify, you must always. What must you do always? Pray. You must always do what? Pray and never give up. You must always pray and never give up. That is okay. Luke 18, look, no, look 18, 18, 18 verse 1. First Thessalonians 5 verse 8. So, I think from verse 16 or 17, when you say pray always. In everything. Never stop, uh, verse 17. Verse 17, okay. Never stop praying. Mm -hmm. Be thankful in all circumstances. You must never do what? Never stop praying. Uh, in the house, 16 in the morning, you wake up, we pray in the morning here. By 9 a.m., altar of, altar of uh, strength, we pray again. By three again, altar of revival, we pray again. By nine again, we pray. Our prayer, prayer always, prayer, prayer always. I hope someone is not complaining in this house. I hope you are not complaining in this house already. We are not even praying enough now. You remember, we are supposed to pray. Our prayer is supposed to be actually be six, nine, twelve, three, six, nine again. Abi, that is our altar in this house. But we narrowed it out to what? To be to be six, nine, three, and then what? And then six and nine. The six, we don't do it every time. Except the days we are having Bible study. So we make, we'll make not do that. Why do we have to do so? Men ought always to do what? To always to pray. Never he said pray at all. The word, the word is 17 says. Never letter, stop praying. Never stop. Some verse, Kijem said, do, do not cease. I mean, Kijem, read Kijem for me. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. From Kijem's version. I wish we open the scriptures now. No, you should have left Luke. I've left Luke since. 517 from King James. Pray without, Pray without what? Without season. Now me talk am. No. So this is how to what? To enjoy what? Covenant relationship with what? I mean how to enjoy what? To enjoy mercy magnify. Then the part B of it is that you must have somebody praying for you. You must have a covenant person, a chosen man praying for you. You must be prayerful and must have what? I must have a prayer covering. Number two point I see is what? What? You must be prayerful and you must have what? You must have a prayer covering. You must have what? Prayer a prayer covering. covering. Not your prayer for you. Lord prayed, but Lord had a prayer covering. Now, who prayed for Lord before, before God spared Lord? Chapter 18 of Genesis. Chapter 18. When God told the angel, God told Lot 
I mean Abraham, of destruction of, of Sodom, he began to intercede for the land. He began to what? Intercede for the land. The question is, is this, this morning, how prayerful are you and who is praying for you? Who is that? Abraham was a prophet of God, Abi. He was a servant of God. He was a man of God. He was a man whom God called. God don't call every man. There are men that God chose and anoints for a people and for a time. Who is that one man that is interceding for you? Who is that one? Who is that man? Who prays for you? Who do what? Amen. Please go on. Let's, let's be quiet. I'm recording this message. Amen. Amen. Who is that one man, that servant of God, that chosen one praying for you? It's a strong thing. Amen. It was not because, remember who was remembered? Abraham. Abraham was remembered. Abraham has been interceding for a lot, Abby. Yeah. And God remembered Abraham's prayer for a lot. Who is it that you are relating with a man apart from Jesus? I mean, who is that servant of God? And this is why you need a fellowship. You need what? You need a fellowship. You need to belong to a group of children of God. You need to locate a servant of God. Somebody that God has called. Somebody whose heart of God is upon. Who is what? Who is taking, who is interceding for you? We pray for our friends and partners here. Almost every day. We keep praying for those who God have. Because we have our friends and partners. What is sustaining us is not our relationship, Abby. It's our friends and partners, the people that God brought for us. No member of my family has ever given me ever give me one million naira before. But how people that can give me two million naira, one person. <laughs> Nobody in my family has ever given me one million naira before. But how people that can give me, they are not my blood relationships. And I pray for them always. Paul is speaking to the church in, 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 in Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, he said, in making mention of you in a prayer always, who is the one that used to pray? God bless him. Do you know why he's praying for you? Because you are relating with him as a servant of God. That is a place, the church where you are fellowshipping. That is the means where you are fellowshipping. And that is a place where you are sowing your seed also. You are paying tight. Amen. There are people that whether I pray for them or not, to God remember them because you know why? Because they are connected by their word, by their offering. They bring their tithe, they bring their offering. Amen. Amen. So you must have a place. You can't just be a man. You just wake up in the morning. You just, you just, you just, you just you go to work and come back. Year to year. You don't have one man of God. I'm not talking of this, this, this charlatan. I'm talking of a genuine man of God that you are relating with, you are fellowshipping with, that you go there to sit down to hear God's word, and he knows you. You have a relationship with that man of God. And he's praying for you. Amen. You need it. We need it. The time that we are in is, is indicate that we need such relationship. You need a prophet over your life. You need God's servant by your life. You need a man of God, God's chosen, God's anointed. Amen. You need an anointed of God. Somebody that has the hand of God upon his life that you are relating with, that is interceding for you. Amen. 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 You go there to hear the word of God. He prays for you. And you in turn, you sow your seed. You give him offering. You give him tithes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You need it. Amen. We can begin. It's not late yet. We have four months in the year. And that is why we are not protected. Amen. Every man, you need to hide yourself under another man. You need to what? You need a covering. You need what? If, if rain is falling and uh, you are with somebody that has an umbrella, you run on top of the umbrella and you are moving with the person. Will the rain beat you? Now, the question is that whose umbrella are you enjoying? 
there are people that God have called. Who among them are you relating with that you are enjoying their protection? There is danger in the land. There is evil in our nation. You cannot live like this. We are, we are from a land. I know where I come from. The land where I came from. I know my land. And I have, I have somebody who prays for me. I have a spiritual covering. I have a spiritual father. And I have spiritual sons. Amen. You must have a covering. I'm not a spiritual bastard. I have a spiritual father. So who is your spiritual father? Amen. I had to leave Lokoja to go to Meduguri. Because the Lord asked me to return back to Meduguri. Go back to Rebbe Jiridaya. And I went. And he said, go and stay there one year. I'll tell you what to do. I went. And the relationship, I'm not, the relationship is still on. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And I also have children today. Those whom God has brought under my own covering. And God is protecting and preserving them. And the calamity of the nation will not happen to them. Amen. Because no evil shall come nigh them. Amen. Shall come nigh me. Not those who are, who are in this ministry together. My protection is a protection. The people, the family of Lot enjoy the protection of Lot. And Lot enjoy the protection of, of, of Abraham. So everyone with me, spiritual children, biological children, they are all protected. Friends, partner, they are all protected. Amen. The relationship, the, my protection is a protection. My canopy is a canopy. You need a canopy, a spiritual canopy. Don't be a spiritual bastard. You will die carelessly. You will, you, what kill others will kill you. Angels are attracted to men that have covenant relationship and men that have what? That have spiritual covering. Remember, the angel that came to Lot, where did they come from? They came from Abraham's place. Read chapter 18. Where did they come from? They, they went on a mission to Abraham to announce to Abraham that he was going to give birth to a child. It was from Abraham that they were despised to also go and because the angel that fellowship with Abraham went to fellowship with Lot. The same angel that brought Lot out were the angel that went to what? That went to announce the birth of Isaac to Abraham. The same angel that Abraham failed. Abby? Yeah. The same angel, after they finished their mission from Abraham, they began to look, uh, where are they relating to Abraham? Let's also do them good. Yeah. Are you heard about? Yeah. When you are with a man, the angel that fellowship with him, they begin to fellowship with you also. Don't die, you know, in isolation. Because when the devil wants to kill a man, he isolates him for a relationship, a covenant relationship. Don't be isolated. Amen. I'm not talking about you going to a prophet for prayer. I'm talking about you going for line life. I'm talking about you having what? You understand what I'm talking about? Having what? A minister of God. The one who you know God is upon that you are fellowshipping with. Very important. People that are, that are doing, that are doing, serving idol, that are doing charm, they have babalawo, they have, they have dibias that they are connected to. I hope you know that. Yes. People that have what? That are doing paganism, they have what? They have witch doctors, they are what? They are related to. Look at, go and study the, the Bible. You see, in, in the, 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 the Babylonians, the, the Egyptians, they had what is called, every of these people had what is called, they have magicians and astrologers. I mean, Egypt had it, Pharaoh had it. Yes. He had his own magicians. They, he, he pays their bills. They consult for him. You must have, who is the one that is consulting for you? You are going, you are busy up and down. Who is the one? You need it. Let's not be fools. Read in your Bible. The kings of the Bible, they had prophets. All of them had a man. Solomon had a prophet. David had a prophet. I mean, prophets. They all had people who were what? Who were their spiritual coverings? Who is covering you? Say, by a man, the Lord brought them out. Who is the one that God is using over your life? Your fellowship is with Jesus, and then after Jesus, you need another man. 
somebody who is interceding for you. We have taken time in this teaching, but it's very it's worth it. Number three things. The, the third thing that you need to enjoy mercy magnified is righteous living. You need righteous life. You need righteous living. The third thing is righteous living. You must live righteous life. If mercy must be magnified to you, righteousness must be found in you. You must not live anyhow. You want to enjoy mercy magnified? You must what? You must live which life? Which life do you live? A righteous life. And James chapter 5 verse 17, he said, for the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. You have to what? You have to live a righteous life. The ears of God are attend to the prayers of the righteous. If you want mercy to be magnified to you, you must make up your mind in this moment to live what? To live a righteous life. Second Peter chapter 2. We're going to read that place. Second Peter chapter 2. We're reading chapter 2. From verse 6 to verse 10. Second Peter chapter 2. Verse 6 to 10. Let's see the life of the Lord. One of the reasons why Lot enjoyed mercy magnified. Later, mm-hmm. God condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah mm-hmm. and turned them into heaps of ashes. Mm-hmm. He made them an example of what will happen to ungodly people. Mm-hmm. But God also rescued Lot out of Sodom because he was a righteous man who was. No, 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 because he was what? A righteous man. No, listen, please. What, what, what verse is that? The seven. Because he was what? A righteous man. God did what? Rescued him because he was what? Now, remember the Bible said Genesis chapter 19, verse 29, that it was because of Abraham, Abby, yes. that God remembered him, Abby, because he was in the covenant relationship. But it was not just because of that. He was also what? He was also what? A righteous man. And we saw that he had somebody praying for Abraham, prayed for him, chapter 18, Abby. He had somebody praying for him. He had somebody, he was also personally living a righteous life. So it's a combination of things. If somebody is praying for you and not living a righteous life, will you walk? No? no. Somebody, you, somebody can be praying, a pastor can be praying for you. If your own life is not righteous, will the prayer work? Will it work. will not work. Because the Bible says a prayer of a sinner is what? Is an abomination to the Lord. And that is why pastors are wasting prayers because they are praying for members who are not living a righteous life. The prayer is called wasted life. They can do anything for you. Are you hearing the word of God? About? Whatever pastor is doing for you, if your life is not correct, what happens to what pastor is doing for you? The pastor is wasting his time. It's like they should do line libration for you. Eh? What they buried, when they did libration, where was they? Where, where was the pastor? Why didn't the thing work? I'll be sure you carry pastors to go and pray. And they prayed in your father's house. That was so. How come the thing they've done in your father's house is still standing there? I don't know. You are getting the message. How come that thing is still standing against you? And they asked you that there's something somebody do in your father. How you took pastor on to go and pray for you last December? How come the thing was not spoiled? It will not work because you yourself, whom they are working for as the head of the family, your life is not correct. I told my wife, I said, they are going to waste their time. I mean, didn't I tell you that time? No, that was not a starting point. The starting point is you. That is how God operates. Oh. Your life must be correct. Lot's life was what? The life of Lot was what? It was a correct life. His life was what? Was correct. He was what? He, he was, was a... Read on from the 7. Read the 7 all over again, eh? But God also rescued Lot out of Sodom because mm-hmm. he was a righteous man mm-hmm. who was sick of the shameful immorality of the wicked people around him. He was what? Sick of he the was shameful sick. immorality. How, how do you feel when you see people drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, living immoral life? How do you feel? People taking bribe in office, people cheating on that, people, you know, into, how do you feel? Lot was not just a right, he was a righteous man. A man who was he was not he was not doing what they are doing, and he was also what he was sick as seeing and hearing what they are doing. That is a righteous man. Uh-huh. Yes, 
Lot was a righteous man who was tormented in his righteousness, mm -hmm. in his soul, by the wickedness he saw, and heard day after day. Mm -hmm. So you see, the Lord knows how to rescue godly people from their trials, even while keeping the wicked under punishment. It's okay, praise the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. I think the point is made. Let's go to the last point. Point number, the last point is the fourth thing that will make you to enjoy mercy magnify is called hospitality. Hospitality and brotherly love. Hospitality and brotherly love. Hospitality and brotherly love. We can, we can also see that in Romans 13. Was it 13? 13? Or Romans 12, 13? Exactly. It should be Romans 12, 13. But let's see Genesis first. Let's see what Genesis... Genesis... Let's go to Genesis first. Genesis uh, text, major text. Genesis chapter 19. You can begin to look at... From verse uh, 1 to 5, we saw... We don't need to read because of time again. Time is fast spent. Genesis chapter 19. What did... When Lord saw the angel... Those strangers, because they were strangers on the streets, in the open air, hungry. What did Lot do to them? From, from Psalm 19, from verse 1 to 5. He called them home. He went and made them out. Why should you sleep in this open place? Come into my house. He said, no, we don't want to we'll sleep here. Say, please, come into my house. He begged them to come into his house. Abby. And when they came into his house, what did he do? He cooked food and fed them. He cared for them. They had need. The strangers were what? They had needs. They were homeless in Sodom. Abi? They were hungry in Sodom. How did he do? He brought them in and what? And fed them. He met their needs. Amen. He did what? He met the need of those, of those strangers. So you must care for the needy. You must be in, just like Abraham saw them and he welcomed them to his home. Abi? He learned to Abraham to care for people. He cared for people. Amen. Let's not be selfish. We are too selfish. We don't care for anybody. All we care for is ourselves, ourselves, ourselves alone. So many is so unfortunate. And that is what Matthew chapter 25 from verse 30, uh, I think from verse 31 says to 41. Amen. Say, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you, did, you, did you give me to do? When I was naked, did you clothe me? Many of us were too selfish with what we have. Look at what is happening to Christians in Nigeria. IDPs all over in, in millions. Some churches have money in their account. They don't even care. Most believers are just angry. People are hungry in the country today. They don't care for anybody. Even the ministers who minister to them, they don't even care for them. It's all about their self. Buying latest clothes. Changing car. Changing houses. Selfish people. You cannot enjoy mercy magnify if you are living a selfish life. You must live a life of what? Of brotherly love, brotherly care. You must what? You must live a life of hospitality. You must care for others. Romans chapter. Have you seen Romans yes, chapter? 12, 13. 12, 13. Uh -huh. When God's people... Oh, yeah, let's read together. Romans 12, 13. Together. Romans 12, 13. Uh -huh. When God's people are in need, mm -hmm. be ready to help them. Be what? Ready to help them. When God's people are what? Are in need. In need. Be what? Be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Always be what? Eager. Be eager to practice what is called what? Hospitality. Hospital. What? Liti. So Lot was not just living righteous life. He was also what? He was also practicing what? Hospitality. Amen. He helped others. He was not selfish with what he had. If you want to, you want to enjoy mercy magnify, one of the key things is that word. You must practice what is called what? Hospitality. Let's be a bit and begin to pray. We have taken enough this morning. Let's begin to pray. Abala Shandara Dost. Kabalabala. Lord, I want to enjoy mercy magnify. Are you praying for yourself, Lord? Can you begin to pray for these four things? Covenant relationship. I want to be prayerful. Help me to be prayerful. Help me to be to locate a man that will pray that a, a covering also. Help me to live righteous life. Help me to live a life of hospitality. 
In Jesus' name we pray. I remain your brother Moses or George Chenemy, God special, the coordinator of the special discipleship ministry. God bless you. If you are blessed by this message, don't forget to like it, to share it, and to circulate it, and to drop your comments. And also don't forget to support this ministry, to care for this ministry. A lot needs to be done. We are doing a lot in our mission activities. The Discipleship Center project is ongoing. And from this month of September, we want to begin, you know, to gather resources to be able to start, you know, structure by from com for commencing from October this year. We want to start a structure. So resources needed for our mission activities and for the Discipleship Center. God bless you as you extend brotherly love to this ministry, as you care and as you, you know, continue to, you know, do the work of an evangelist and also, you know, care for the needy. God bless you. Shalom, 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 shalom.